we have two graphs f and g right and then f being our parabola and then g being a straight line and then a here is said to be the turning point of f and then we have the axis of symmetry of f that intersects the axis at e and the function g at d right and then c is the y intercept of f c is here is the y intercept of f this is actually the y axis and this is the x axis let's go ahead and you know solve our problem so 4.2.1 is saying that uh, let's write down the coordinates of a a is the turning point of f right uh, so f uh, we have some function f of x being equals to a half x plus 5 uh, squared minus 8 so i'm going to expand this expression and then i will be able to find the coordinates of a so we're going to say that f of x is equals to a half and then now uh, x multiplied by x that is x squared and then x multiplied by 5 that is 5x multiplied that by 2 you get 10x and then 5 multiplied by 5 that is just 25 right and then minus 8 so now we're going to use both mass, right we're going to multiply out first before we subtract so we're going to have half x squared uh, plus 5x plus 25 divided by 2 and then minus 8 right so right now we're seeing 25 uh, divided by 2 minus 8 which is 9 divided by 2 so f of x is equals to a half x squared plus 5x plus 9 divided by 2 the coefficient of x squared is a and the coefficient of x is b and this number here will be our c uh, the x coordinate of the turning point is given by minus b divided by 2a right so what is minus b that will be minus 5 divided by 2 multiplied by a half so that should be equals to uh, 2 multiplied by half is just 1 so x is just minus 5 right and then now y will be equals to uh, we just substituting minus 5 into the equation right uh, so that will be a half and then minus 5 squared plus 5 multiplied by minus 5 plus 9 divided by 2 and if you put this in your calculator you should get uh, y is equals to minus 8 so now we're saying that the coordinates of a is minus 5 and minus 8 and we can do 4.2.2 so 4.2.2 is saying that uh, let's write down the range of f so we have already established that a is the turning point of f right and then f is concave up it will be easy to see here that y will always be greater or equals to minus 8 right it can never be less than minus 8 because at minus 8 that's where it turns and it goes up from there until infinity and that's exactly what we are required to write essentially now let's do 4.2.3 so 4.2.3 is in that let's calculate the values of m and n right uh, those are the x and y coordinates of d we can see that uh, a and e and d here they lie on the same line right uh, so if they lie on the same line like that then they share the same x value right so now we know that m is equals to minus 5 because it shares the same value with a now we're just looking for n right but then that will be pretty much straightforward because we have the equation of the function g of x right we know that g of x is equals to a half x plus uh, 9 divided by 2 so uh, g of x will be equals to a half and then in place of x we put in minus 5 and then plus 9 uh, divided uh, by 2 and then uh, g of x should be equals to 2 so now we're saying that m is equals to 5 and n is equals to 2 and we have determined those values we can now do 4.2.4 so 4.2.4 is saying that let's calculate the area of 
OCD. Let's calculate the area of OCD. We can see that OCD is a weird shape. O uh, C D E is a weird shape, right? Uh, is a trapezium. Uh, this obviously a formula you can use to calculate the area of a trapezium. Uh, but then I'm just going to divide the trapezium into a triangle and a rectangle, right? And then calculate the separate areas. I don't want to introduce anything new if you've never seen uh, the formula for the area of a trapezium. We just stick into the basics, right? We're not doing anything new. So here, let's go ahead and um, I uh, have a line like that. Let's let this point here be K, right? Now we just have a triangle OKDE, right? And then uh, we know uh, fully well the X coordinate of K. The X coordinate of K will be zero, right? And then the Y coordinate of K will be the Y coordinate of uh, D, right? Uh, which is two because we see that N is equal to two. So now we can say that um, the area of O C D E will be equals to the area of the triangle plus uh, the area of uh, the rectangle, right? So the area um, of O C D E uh, will be equals to so for the triangle that will be a half uh, base multiplied by height, right? And then for the rectangle that will be uh, the length multiplied by the breadth. So let's uh, look at the breadth of uh, the triangle, right? The breadth for the triangle is DK, right? And it's five units from D to K. They share the same Y value, but then uh, the X coordinate of D is minus five and the X coordinate of K is zero. So that uh, distance there will be five units. Uh, so the breadth here is five. Now let's look at the height. Uh, the height is the distance from K to C. That will be the Y value of C uh, minus the Y value of K, right? Uh, C is the Y intercept of G of X, right? So we will know that that value there is nine divided by two. So we just have nine divided by two uh, minus two. And if we do that arithmetic there, we should get uh, five uh, divided by two, right? So here we're saying that uh, the height is five divided by two plus the distance from O to K uh, will be two, right? Uh, so we're gonna have two there multiplied by uh, the distance from uh, D to K. We already know that uh, that should be equals to five. And then if we put that in our calculator, uh, we should get 65 uh, divided by four uh, units, uh, units squared, right? Uh, some units squared that we don't know of. And now we can carry on and, you know, uh, solve the other problems. So 4.2.5 here. So we have 4.2.5 saying that let's determine the equation of G inverse in the form Y is equals to. So G of X, we know for a while that uh, G of X is equals to a half X plus 9 divided by 2. So if we want to find the inverse, we swap x and y and solve for y, right? So in place of y, we put in x, and then in place of x, we put in um, y. And then from there, we just solve for y. So if we want to solve for y, it should be easy to see that we're going to take 9 divided by 2 to the left-hand side. So we're going to have x minus 9 divided by 2 being equals to a half y. So if we divide everything by a half, we're going to get 2x minus uh, 9 being equals to y. And that's exactly what our uh, equation is for the inverse of uh, g. Now, 4.2.6, uh, uh, which is saying that h of x is equals to uh, g inverse of x uh, plus k is a tangent to f determine the coordinates of the point of contact between h and f if we just say h of x is equals to 
f of x right uh, usually we would be able to find that x coordinate but then in this case that won't be true because we're going to have this variable k so we cannot just say h of x is equals to f of x right although we know fully well that uh, they touch at that point but then what we also know is that their gradients are equal so we can uh, just equate the gradients right we can derivate the two equations and equate the gradient so uh, we can say that h prime of x is equals to uh, f prime of x right if we derivate h of x we shall get 2 because our minus 9 and k will fall off right and then now for f of x it's a half x squared plus 5x plus 9 divided by 2 so if we derivate that we shall get x plus 5 right and now uh, we can solve for x uh, it will be easy to see here that um, x will be equals to minus 3 so we have uh, the x value of the point where they touch now we're just looking for the y value we're going to substitute this x value into f of x right because we can actually not substitute it into h of x because we don't know the value of k so now we can say that f of minus 3 will be equals to a half and then in place of x minus 3 squared plus 5 uh, minus 3 there plus 9 divided by 2 and then this will give you minus 6 so they touch uh, at some point uh, that is coordinates minus 3 and minus 6 